It's almost Mother's Day, and we are going to be talking to some mothers. Hi, I'm Teresa Alvarez Diaz with MrsDiazTalks.com, and today I am privileged to introduce to you one of my colleagues, which um, I've had the privilege of working with for, I don't know, how many years have you been Three here? Three years. Three years, um, and she is one of the mothers on campus that I have found much inspiration, and I just have to, I, I, I asked her, then, Lisa, could you please Please help me as um, you know, part of my um, you know my my program to to just share with some mothers uh, a little bit of inspiration and that we could you know help you along the way you know and um, mm -hmm. I am so thankful. Thank you for taking time. I know you know uh, Elisa is our uh, kindergarten and first grade teacher. She's also um, a speech pathologist. And I know you've been, you know, you have uh, ample experience um, mm -hmm. in that. And after school, she also teaches students um, speech, speech and reading. And reading. Mm -hmm. So we just, you know, got off, and she just got. It was, she gave you a little bit of her time, and I really appreciate it. Uh, Lisa's also um, a mother of three, mm -hmm. intelligent, healthy. <laughs> and very good looking young men, oh, you know, you. yes, and yes. Um, moms always think so, right? I know, of course, <laughs> no, no, but no, hers, yes, mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we've had the privilege of, of seeing your boys, you know, when they've come on campus or just in pictures and, mm -hmm. you know, and they take after their beautiful oh, mother, thank so you. thank you so much, Lisa, I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa, we're talking about motherhood and more in the, you know, in, in the lines of, uh, you know, you when we become mothers, uh, we tend to, at some point, decide this is the type of mother I'm going to be, right? We, we, we have a philosophy of what kind of mother we want to be. And so uh, I would like for you to share a little bit about, you know, your philosophy about motherhood and, you know, how you, because as I said before, I am, you know, I'm an admirer. I've, I've heard you many times share your experiences with, with us when we have our meditations every morning. And that has been just, I mean, I, I, my heart has been blessed when I hear you, um, how you talk about your boys, how you, sh you know, share um, your concern for their experiences in life and how you, you just speak so beautifully about um, each and every one of them. And not because they're perfect or they're, you know, no, it has to do more with your love for them and the way you see them. So, okay, I've said enough and <laughs> now I would like for you to um, just share with us. Well, I do really love my boys. Maybe sometimes I've been a mom that's even been one of those that loves too much or something like that, you know what they say. Um, I wanted children ever since I can remember. Okay. And I was married first. I could not have any children. And when I got married again, I told the Lord, I want children. I told my husband, I want children. Uh, Let's start right away. He says, okay. So we did. Wow. And wasn't getting pregnant. I oh, was wow. so upset and sad. Wow. I just got down on my knees and I prayed. I said, Lord, if you will give me a child, you know, I'll be just like Hannah was. Wow. I, he, he's yours. He's wow. not my child. Wow. And that's really what drove me and my philosophy and my purpose in, in mothering my boys. Wow. And it, realizing these children are not my children. Mm -hmm. They really are God's, and He's lent them to me for a little bit. So I studied how to how to eat during the pregnancy, and I don't think my first child actually got enough food. I was so <laughs> determined. I would only put in my mouth the very right things right, and that kind right. of thing. No sodas, you know, no very, uh, I hardly ever ate a piece of sugar, you know, that kind of thing. Wow, very and disciplined. Very, wow. I never wow. ate between meals, you know, I only did what I thought was going to make the perfect baby. Yes, <laughs> yeah, don't we? Right? <laughs> wow, wow. You know, as if yes. we can really do that. Wow. And I did, I studied a lot during my pregnancy, what God wanted me to be like. I still fell far short, but I... Wanted yeah. to be the best mother I could be. Right. The perfect mother. Right? And, you know, we were talking about that a little while ago, how, you know, uh, if we could go back, you know, we, uh, you know, we would most likely do things differently. But then 
we would most likely come back to that point and say, oh, you know, I need to go back and do something yeah. different. I right? was like way <laughs> overprotective. I know I was. And, but now, and I see my first son very protective of his family unit, yeah. which is, you know, his wife. Yeah. And very protective. And I thought, oh, well. Uh, you're, you know where that one came from. <laughs> right, right. And you know, I, and I don't know uh, other parents' experience, but I think that it's a general rule, right, that the eldest is kind of always the one that we, you know, uh, we start off with and we really don't know what we're doing, right? I mean, because I we're, we don't, we don't, we nobody don't. does, right? Um, but we tend to be very protective, right, because we're experiencing <laughs> this Poor for the guy. first time, right? <laughs> yes, guy. yes. So. You know, you become a mom and you decide, you know, I'm going to uh, protect these kids. And I, and I really, you know, I really connect with that because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, growing up, uh, you know, I, you know, I was without my mother uh, very, very young. And so I grew up also thinking, I'm going to really protect these kids. You know, like nothing is going to happen to them. <laughs> right. And so what happens, you know, when things start happening to them? How, how do you how do you deal with that? Because now you've been a mom for like 30, almost 33 mm -hmm. years. Right. Your eldest is 33? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, yeah. I didn't let him go to school till he was like seven and a half because I was determined I would yeah. be the mother, you know, and yeah. I would. So I started with homeschooling him. But then he is such a social person. He says, I, I got to go to school, Mom, wow. you know, even at that age. Yeah. So it had my life had to change then. I wasn't going to be the homeschooling mom like I thought. And um, I let him find his way with his his teacher. I mean, I knew his teacher, and I knew she was a faithful teacher. Um, and I really didn't interfere too much with their relationship. So I am okay. proud of myself good, for good, that. Good, 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 good. <laughs> because we tend to do that, Yeah, right? she yeah. told him what he needed to do, and he needed to do wow. it. And if he agreed to it, then I supported that, whatever wow. that was. Wow. And he actually ended up doing two years in one year because, you know, I had mm -hmm. waited. Yeah. Um, and, and I said, no, you agreed to do it. Let's follow through with it. So he did. It was tough, but I said, you can do it. And he did. Good. But um, other than that, they had their own relationship. Wow. Wow. Um, I know still. I